Welcome to Lecture 3 of Biology 116 entitled Protus. As we move forward in our development of life, we've gone from the non-living, which was virology and study of viruses, to the living and the simple form of living. And we saw that it was not, not that simple in terms of the bacteria and the prokaryotes that we studied. Now we're at the protist level. What we've shifted in terms of our study of life is from the prokaryotic level to now the eukaryotic level. And that's exactly what we're going to begin with in this first couple of introductory flowcharts to understand what eukarya, the domain eukarya, is all about. So we'll entitle this first flowchart Domain Eukarya. And this is going to be part one of this. So we'll say Domain Eukarya Roman numeral one. Now, let's remember that a domain is a large, very large classifying group of many different organisms. All organisms in domain eukarya will be eukaryotes, true cells. We'll get into the details of what it means to be a true cell in a later video, but for right now I want to look at some origins of eukaryotes, specifically in order to answer this question. How did this domain of eukaryotes eukaryotes evolve. Because right now we're going from prokaryotes when we studied in uh, our previous lecture to eukaryotes. How did we get to this point? The simple answer to this complex question is the following term. And it's a term we've seen before. Endosymbiosis. If you remember from Origin of Life, which I believe was Lecture 4 in Biology 115, endosymbiosis can be defined as the following. It's a relationship, that's the idea of sim, relationship between, btwn for between, two species in which, two species, so two separate species, so double p, two species in which, one organism lives inside the other. One organism, O-R-G for organism, lives inside other. That's what we mean by endo, within. Sim is this living together, and the together is life, bio. The life that is being lived together within an individual is defined by as a relationship between two species in which one organism lives inside the other. Now, a key idea behind endosymbiosis, the sim part of the word, is the fact that there's going to be a mutual benefit to both. Mutual benefit to both, both organisms that are within this uh, structure, this eukaryotic, eventually eukaryotic structure that we'll see. This is a mutualistic relationship. It's plus plus in the world of ecology, if we remember from Bio 115. Now, in terms of the evolutionary process, endosymbiosis can be further understood by creating a, an understanding a hypothesis associated with the process. And that hypothesis is the following. This hypothesis which we'll term and call the following. It is the serial endosymbiosis hypothesis. Serial endosymbiosis hypothesis. Now, the word serial over here, we know what endosymbiosis is based off of our previous definition, but serial over here means a consecutive, uh, c consecutive sequences of events, specifically endosymbiotic events. Moreover, we can define serial endosymbiosis as the following, and this is exactly how eukaryotes truly evolved based off of the research that we have. Key eukaryotic organelles, so EU will be for eukaryotic from this point forward, organelles, we know organelles are things like chloroplasts, mitochondria, a nucleus, a true nucleus, uh, etc. Key eukaryotic organelles evolved through, and there's our answer to our question right here, evolved through uh, sequences of endosymbiotic events. Just like how I mentioned before, sequences of endosym for endosymbiotic events. Keyword here, sequences. And that's what our evolutionary drive was for serial endosymbiosis. Uh, in essence, what we have is the following scenario to better understand this definition.
What we have is initially something known as primary. One degree, if you remember, means primary endosymbiosis. This is a the initial part, the initial sequence of serial endosymbiosis. There's going to be a couple more sequences that we'll see. Primary endosymbiosis is when we had the first ever, let's say, the initial phagocytosis of a bacteria by another cell. So we'll write that down. Phagocytosis, which is a cell eating of bacteria. This should ring a bell in terms of uh, origin of life that we remember. Phagocytosis of bacteria by another cell. And doesn't that make sense in terms of what we defined endosymbiosis as? Relationship between two species in which one organism lives inside the other. So this bacteria that has just been eaten, that has just been phagocytosized, it's going to be living inside another cell. It's going to be living inside something else. This gave rise to our initial understanding of mitochondria. Mitochondria. Why are we mentioning mitochondria specifically? This is a key characteristic of eukaryotic cells because it's one of the key eukaryotic organelles as mentioned right above here. So in mitochondria, their story is the following. An aerobic bacteria was engulfed by an anaerobic bacteria. So we'll write that down. Aerobic bacteria engulfed or eaten, whatever you want to call it, by anaerobic bacteria. So an anaerobic bacteria, which was probably pretty large, was hungry. It came around and ate up an aerobic bacteria, a bacteria that was able to respire, that was able to do cell respiration more specifically, something that we, of course, remember from Bio 1. And this would mean that the engulfed bacteria, will have a couple of uh, terms for it, actually. The engulfed bacteria, a better way to understand it is to call it the alpha. This is the alpha proteo, which would just mean early bacterium. And that is also just a fancy way of also saying the endosymbiont. The living thing that's within the other thing. That's what the endosymbiont is, that's what the alpha proteobacterium is, that's what the engulfed bacteria is, as we mentioned here. So in this situation, the aerobic bacteria is the alpha proteobacterium, it's the endosymbiont, it's the engulfed bacteria, as we've stated previously. Now, in order to really drive home this point, I suggest looking at um, the really nice evidence piece that your textbook provides on page uh, 589. The evidence on page 589 shows us the following scenario. It shows us that the mitochondria um, of all eukaryotes came from one common ancestor. Of all, all eukaryotes from one CA, common ancestor. And that is really good in terms of phylogenetic study. We have a monophyletic origin of our mitochondria because it comes from one common ancestor and it's all through the serial endosymbiosis hypothesis. So this is the basic premise behind the evolution of eukaryotes. And we'll conclude this video by understanding a different organelle that's of great importance. Let's not forget what the title of our uh, entire lecture is, of protus. Okay? Protus have a great importance with this following organelle. And we'll go over this uh, quite briefly. Plastids. Plastids are equal to a group of closely related organelles. That's all I want you to know for right now. Group of closely related organelles. Now, of course, we're going to be talking about organelles because protists are eukaryotes. But how are we going to get to the protist level? Well, we've actually studied plastids before. If you remember, something called the chloroplast, the chloroplast, that is a type of plastid. There's also something called a chromoplast. And look at the end of the word, plast. Plastids are these groups of closely related organelles that have this plast structure, which we'll get into in just a second. And the final point to understand about plastids is the following. And this relates right back to the protists uh, as a whole. Amyoplasts. Now, we haven't talked about these before, but amyoplasts are, of course, a group, uh, a part of this group because they have that plast ending. Amyoplasts are responsible for storing starch. So this stores starch. Okay, big deal. How does that relate back to our protist study? Well, amyoplasts are specifically found in photosynthetic eukaryotic cells. Okay, so these are cells that are able to do photosynthesis. They're able to take the sun and turn it into useful forms of energy based off of all the things that we learned in Bio 1. Now, 
Amyoplast didn't just show up. They were actually a result of some sort of endosymbiotic hypothesis. The host initially initially was, was the host, the bigger cell, the one that was going to eat something, was a heterotrophic eukaryote. But look, I said that amyoplasts are found in photosynthetic eukaryotic cells. That means that this host was heterotrophic. It was previously not able to do photosynthesis, but based off of this consumption, let's just write this down as the fact that initially the host that was the big cell that ate something that led to an amyoplast developing over evolutionary time, initially that cell can't make stuff, you know, sugar, useful um, biomolecules, can't make stuff, let's just call it stuff for right now, on its own, okay? So it just can't do this on its own. But after a couple of different steps, after, let's say, consuming an endosymbiont, let's introduce an endosymbiont to the amyoplast story, an endosymbiont would be a photo synthetic, something that can do photosynthesis, bacteria. This is our alpha proteobacterium right over here. This is our engulfed bacteria. And what's going to happen is this entire structure, the amyoplast, this important, important plastid structure eventually gave rise to two photosynthetic protists of great interest to us as we'll see later. And we'll finally mention the term protist, this class, this, this class of uh, eukaryotic organisms. The two that it gave rise to that did photosynthesis were red algae, and we'll get into this uh, more as we move forward, and also green algae. Don't worry about the details in terms of what they are just yet. And final point about plastids, good thing to note in terms of evolutionary time, these actually arose after mitochondria. Okay, so mitochondria were the first true, let's say, eukaryotic key organelle. After that, plastids arose. Specifically, amyoplasts will be of interest to us because they gave rise to two photosynthetic protists known as the red algae and the green algae based off of this endosymbiont host relationship that we established in our evolution of eukaryotes.